everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday night edition of uh, Family Devos. We'll be wrapping up tonight. So this will be the accumulation, I think, of like 19 uh, Devos that we've had. This might be 20. I don't know. But uh, I know yeah. like 30. Yeah, <laughs> not quite. Yeah. So it's good to see everybody tonight. And we're, we left off where Jesus was in the tomb. But thankfully, that's not the end of the story. Because the tomb wouldn't be a good place to end the story, would it? No. No. So it's very important what happens next. Happy and, ending. Yes. An amazing ending. So Travis, would you like to lead us in prayer tonight Please. for to get started here? Please, um, since the um the coronavirus is starting to spike for that to go down and for it to go away. Please to keep everyone safe for the um family devo to bring people here to know you and believe in you so they can be saved. Jesus, name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to pick back up in the tomb. Since the day that Adam sinned, death had reigned like a cruel king over the human family. Oh, no. If Jesus had ever sinned, death would have reigned over him also. But he never sinned, and 1,000 years before Jesus died, the prophet David, he wrote in the Psalms, you will not let your Holy One see decay. So that meant if Jesus died, he wasn't going to stay dead very long at all. So death in the grave had no power over Jesus who never sinned. On the third day after Jesus was killed and buried. Early Sunday morning, several women came to the tomb to pay their respects. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, quake, <laughs> quake, earthquake, as an angel came down from heaven, pushed aside the big stone that sealed up the tomb, and sat on it. Y'all remember the big round stone? Yep. That was super heavy, maybe like two, 2,000 pounds or more. That's the heaviest angel. More. Use it as yeah. a picnic table. <laughs> so the soldiers, remember the soldiers that had been left to guard the tomb? Mm -hmm. Guess what happened when they saw the angel? Mm -hmm. They fainted. Uh, the angel told the women, don't be afraid. He said, I know you are here looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised from the dead just as he said it would happen. Come see where the body was lying. And now go and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but they were also filled with great joy. Wait, is this um is this one? Do not be afraid. I give bring you good news of great joy. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That was back at the beginning when the angel told the shepherds that at his birth, and the other kind of saying the same thing at his death. At his resurrection. Hey, I've got good news. Great joy. I'm not coming back for life. Don't be afraid. I, I think I can do the verse. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of good joy. Yes. In right. this Tidy. town of Jerusalem. Uh, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Jesus has risen. <laughs> a savior has been born. Right. A savior. And then later on, where we're reading today, a savior is risen indeed all right That's so thank you thank you that, that kind of yeah that does kind of remind you of what the uh, angel said to the shepherds so they had great joy so they rushed to find the disciples and give them the good news so god loves to give people good news me too all right meanwhile the soldiers came into the city the soldiers finally woke up from fainting and they knew they were going to be in trouble because they had fainted on the job and so the soldiers came into the city and they told the religious leaders what happened so the religious leaders bribed them and do you know what a bribe is no. it's when you pay someone a bunch of money to lie for you or like so the religious leaders gave the soldiers a bunch of money to tell a lie and that bribing yeah. also like oh i'll like do your chores for you if you'll like go take out the trash 
Well, that's making a negotiation. It's not necessarily bribing. Bribing has to do with kind of like paying someone to bend the truth or to go around what's right. But if you make a deal with someone, then that's a deal. That's fair. That's, you know, if they agree to it, then they agree to it. And it's a a deal. Yeah. Yeah. So they said the religious leaders gave the soldiers a whole bunch of money and said, here's the lie that we want you to tell. You must say that Jesus' disciples came during the night while you were sleeping and they stole his body. But their lies couldn't hide the truth. The tomb was empty. By his death, Jesus paid our sin debt. Because what's the penalty for sin? Death. 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 And what did Jesus do? Died. He paid died. For it. And the penalty is paid. <laughs> Everything you need to have your sins taken care of has been paid. paid and done. By his burial, Jesus went down into death and he was buried. And because he was buried, that shows he was really dead. Some people say, well, maybe he, Jesus passed out, or maybe Jesus was in a coma. But isn't this the fact that he got um, pierced in the side? Yep, the, in that's the right. He got pierced in the side, and the blood and the water came out. And then he was buried. And buried, it's like, that's what you do with people who are dead, not people who are passed out, not people who are in a coma. A coma is like, you're asleep and you don't wake up for maybe days and days or months and months or maybe sometimes even years, Travis. Like, um, if something happens to you really bad, you can go into a coma and you like stay asleep. Yeah, I remember, so, um, remember in Independence Day with the aliens, that crazy guy was in a coma for like five years. Okay, yes, so comas can go on. So some people think, well, maybe Jesus didn't really die, but the fact that they pierced his side and they buried him and he was in the tomb for three days that shows he was really dead you know that um how what the coma reminds me of what when you get the um penalty of death and they give you that pill that you never wake up of oh the death penalty they give you lethal injection yeah, yeah no that's not a coma that's being dead no in that's a coma, what it you're reminds, still alive that's okay. what it reminds me of. so he, in his death he paid our sin debt but in his burial, have- it's proof that he died. And then by his resurrection, Jesus overcame death. And really, he destroyed death. Because was Jesus ever going to die again? No. No. So once he rose up, raised up, he destroyed death. So a, his resurrection, he didn't just reverse death to maybe die again someday but he rose up to never, ever die again. So he destroyed death. And death is one of the most scary things to people. And Jesus just destroyed it so it would never come back on him. And when we believe in him, he gives us what kind of life? Eternal. Eternal life. And how long does that last? Forever. Forever. So we have eternal life. So we don't have to worry about dying and staying dead we can know that when we die we're going to be with god in heaven and then one day our body will even be raised up to be with us where we are in heaven with god so don't be afraid jesus said i am the first and the last i am the living one who died and look i am alive forever and ever and that's what he's saying he He's basically saying he destroyed death to never come under death again. And he says, I hold the keys of death and the grave. For all who believe this is good news. Remember, God loves to give good news. Mm-hmm. I like right. to and the Bible says in John 14, 19, because I live, you also will live. So because Jesus was resurrected, then that shows that we can also be resurrected. So his resurrection was the proof that eternal life is real. So just like Jesus raised up from the dead, never to die again, the same thing will happen to us who believe in Jesus. We'll be raised up to be together with God forever. Because does God want to be with us? Yes. Yeah, so he made a way that we could be with him forever by paying for our sins and then destroying death and rising up, raising up. So 
he has life and he can give us life forever. And so the Bible talks about believing the good news. And so the Bible uses a term called the gospel. Have y'all heard of that term, the gospel? The term. The, the, the word gospel. So the Bible talks about the word gospel and the gospel is the good news about Jesus. And the gospel has, it's very simple. The gospel is Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again. That's the good news. Your sins are paid for by your savior and your savior is alive, which proves there is eternal life that he's going to give you. Um, what is that again? The gospel is. No, I didn't know that. The Bible? Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that in a, in right, a minute. I mean, yeah. Okay, so me. what's the gospel? Jesus uh, died and rose again. Jesus died for our sins. And rose again. And rose again. That's right. That's the good news. So the good news is you could say to someone, Jesus paid for your sins and he rose up to prove it and to prove he can give you eternal life. He is alive. So that's the good news. So after his resurrection, Jesus talked to certain people. And on the day of his resurrection, he appeared to many of his disciples, first to the women and then to Peter. And then he appeared to two travelers. And the two travelers didn't recognize Jesus at first because they thought, well, he was dead, you know, so they weren't like expecting it to be him. So he kind of walks along with them and talks to them. On the same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus. It was seven miles from Jerusalem. Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened here in the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The travelers told how they had hoped Jesus of Nazareth would have been the Messiah to conquer the Romans, but instead he was crucified. And now the tomb was empty and someone had probably stolen the body. It didn't make any sense. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people. That's interesting. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the Old Testament. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he's going to, Jesus is going to give them kind of like a little mini tour of the Old Testament and show how all the Old Testament things talk about him. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the beginning and remember Adam and Eve. What did Adam and Eve do? They were not supposed to eat the fruit of the one tree. And what did they do? They ate it and they sinned. And what did God say would happen when they died? Or when, <laughs> when they sinned? Yes die they would die, surely die and so they ate it and then they tried to hide what cover their sin up with what big, big, leaves. big leaves did fig leaves do a good job no, of covering no. their sin no. did god accept their fig leaves no. no he rejected their fig leaves and what did god provide them animal skin. animal and what happened to the animal died. so the animal died to cover Adam and Eve's sin, just like Jesus died on the cross to pay our sins. That'd be weird. They're just like, <laughs> they tied together a bunch of live animals. <laughs> yes, the ah! animal had to die. I can't see. Okay, good. You had me worried there. So, who came after Adam and Eve? I really who was next? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Okay, so... They were both sinners because their parents were sinners. And remember, the sin passes on through the parents. So Cain and Abel sinned. And so what was the penalty for their sin? Death. 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 Okay. And then Cain, he made an altar. And remember, God told him to make an altar. And then they, and what did Cain bring Vegetables. for the altar? Vegetables. Now, what's the penalty for sin? Death. Death. The vegetables die. No. Well, no. So God did not accept 
their vegetables. And then what did Abel bring? I don't like vegetables. I only <laughs> like meat. <laughs> and what did I'm a carnivore. What did Abel bring? A lamb. A lamb. And do lambs die? Yes. Okay. So what's the penalty for sin? Yeah. Okay. So just like the lamb died to pay for Abel's sin, Jesus died to pay for our sin. And then after Cain and Abel, the people started to be really wicked. And there was only one guy who was really following the Lord, and that was Noah and his family. And so God told Noah to build a boat because there was going to be a judgment on all the wicked people because the people of the earth were not listening to God. They were just doing their own thing. And they, the Bible says they only thought about doing evil all the time. And that was the only thing they thought about. And God said the earth was filled with violence. So he said, I'm going to destroy the, I'm going to flood the world, but I'm going to start over with you and your family. And I want you to build an ark and I want you to put all the animals in it. And how many doors did the ark have? One. One. How many days okay. did they have again? One week? Um, 120 years to build the ark. And so. So a century and 20 years. 120 years. Wait, no. A century and 20 years to build the ark. A, a century and two decades. In a century and two decades. That's right. That's right. So when God brings judgment. Does he also bring a way to escape? Yes. yes. He does. He always makes a way to escape. So here was a boat and other people could have got on, but did anyone else get on the boat? Nope. No. Nope. And there was one way on the boat, just like there's one way to get to heaven. Just like there's one way in the boat, there's one way to have your sins paid for, and that's through Jesus Christ. So everyone on the boat, Noah and his three sons and their wives were saved. And then they started, they came off the boat and Noah and his family did, did their sacrifices and they followed God. But, would you pass that over to me? How much flint but then lives? after a, a few years went by, do you remember what this is called, Travis? Um, the... Yeah. The Tower of, of Babel. I, the Tower I, of Babel. And they, what did the people at the Tower of Babel do? Did they believe in God or were they doing something else? They were doing this. Okay. And what were they doing up here? They, were they, they were not spreading out. They were staying together. They were, God had told them to spread out and fill the earth. And they stayed mm -hmm. together and they built this, this uh, tower. And up at the top of the tower, they would worship idols. They would worship the sun and the moon. Wait. So, Chloe, would you hand me? And remember, this was a lot of work. They were working and working and doing their own religion and trying to have their Before own way of salvation. Before you put it back, why is it only one fit? Um, that's just the way I built it. Um. Yep. So, Chloe, would you pass the, the earth? And so, do you remember the earth at this time? What? How bad were things on the earth? What... It was pitch black. Okay, yeah, let's just cover it up. And why are we covering up the whole earth? Because what was going on? But there well, was not one because of sin. Way. What was going on? What were they doing? The, it had taken Evil. over the whole world. Idolatry. idolatry. Universal idolatry. So then what was God's answer to that? Death. No. How did God Except decide? Because he had been trying to reach everyone. What did he do after... The, whole, the world went into universal idolatry. Them. What did he do? Yeah, he, sp he spread them out. And then they started worshiping idols everywhere. And then, so what did God do? He, he said, I'm not going to work with all the people now. I'm only going to work with one. one. And who did God pick out? Israel. He picked out Israel. And who was the head of it, the start of Israel? Abraham. Abraham. That's right. And do you remember what God asked Abraham to do with his son? Um, and sacrifice him. Sacrifice his son. So he was going to sacrifice his son, and God said his only son. So this is like a, the picture of what Abraham did is like a picture of what Jesus was going to do for us. Mm -hmm. Because God put his own son, Isaac, on the altar, just like God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. Isn't Jesus um, a descendant of Abraham? He is, yes. Big Daddy. He comes from the 
Jesus the Messiah comes out of the nation of Israel. And that was Israel's important job. They were going to be the one nation that God was going to use to reach the world that had gone into idolatry. And so God gave Israel special laws and was working specially with that nation so they would um, follow him and that they would be able to be the right nation for the, for the Bible to come out of because the Bible came out of the Jewish nation, out of Israel, and also the Messiah came out of Israel as well. And so the Messiah comes out of Israel. Um, and so Abraham is going to be who God uses to start the nation of Israel. And God wants the nation of Israel to reach the whole world for him. So that was his plan to reach the world was through Abraham. And so then what happened to Abraham's children? Where did they end up first? Um, before they got to the promised Egypt. land, would you hand me that white house, Chloe? Uh, so God's people end up in Egypt. And will Pharaoh let the people go? No. no. So what does God finally say he's going to do? Send the deaf angel. He's going to send the deaf angel. That's right. So what did God tell the people to do who believed in him? Um, put, put, blood, um, put, put blood on the door. Uh, but, but it has to be a lamb. Uh, okay. And so he said, there's going to be a death in every house in Israel. But if I see the blood and I know that there's already been a death, the angel would do what to that house? Pass over. He would pass over. So the angel would see the blood on the door and he'd say, there's already been a death of a substitute. So I will pass over because judgment has already fallen on the lamb. And it doesn't need to fall on the firstborn. It kind of reminds me of like he collects like your money. Like if you didn't, if there's not already a payment, then he comes and gets your money. He, well, yes. Yeah, there's a payment. Because what's the payment for sin? Death. Death. And when he sees the Passover lamb, he counts that as a substitute death. death. So that if there's blood on the door, those in the house, everyone in the house is saved. Because there's already been a payment so of death. So if, like, let's say if right here there was another house and there was a kid who, like, his house was not, did not have the marking. If he went into that house, would he be fine? Um, if he went into a house where there was the blood. If he said, I want to be in a house with the blood, and he went in there, but he would be fine. what if he didn't know what it meant? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was the, it was the kind of the man's job to take care of his house and to kill the lamb for his, for his family. Yeah. Does it have to be a lamb? It had to, it was, had to be a lamb for the Passover. And so the Passover um, points us to Jesus being our Passover lamb, because when we put our trust in Jesus Christ, Death has already fallen on Jesus Christ, and so he was our substitute, and we can know that our penalty has been paid by our Passover lamb. And so after Passover, then God took them out, gave them the Ten Commandments, and then as part of giving them the Ten Commandments, God also gave them a new altar. And he said, no, we're no longer going to use all the rock altars everywhere for the sacrifices we're now only going to use one whoop that was loud one altar and so now the sacrifices would be done with the priest because then god set up the priesthood and remember he set up the tabernacle which later turned into the temple and let's let's put that down T. and that later turned into the temple so they had the tabernacle and that's where they would do their sacrifices and remember, the, what was the first thing you saw when you came into that tabernacle? Remember the tent with the courtyard around uh, it? What was the first thing you saw when you I, came in that the, curtain the that surrounded it? You came inside the curtain, you saw the what? The altar. The altar. Okay. So the first thing that people had to do when they came into that courtyard of the tabernacle was they had to do a sacrifice. So how, you know how there was like 10 layers of on that one sheet could yes. anyone like pull open it 
it'd be very difficult. And no one wanted to pull open because if you looked back there, you would die. Because remember, you, only I, the priest could go behind the, you talking about the curtain in the, in the Holy of Holies? Are you talking about the curtain that went all the way around the tabernacle? Uh, the one that was covering up the... Holy of Holies? Is that the thing in yeah. church you died? Yes. But, wait, you look in there you died? Yeah, you, they didn't even look back in there. Oh, so only the priest came? Only the high priest went in there once a year, and what did he take with him when he went in there? Blood. 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 Why blood? To flick it. Because what's the shedding of blood gives yeah. forgiveness because it's from a death. Okay. So then they had the altar and that altar um, stayed with them. The tabernacle was portable. And then that turned into the temple once they moved into their promised land and they took the land of Israel. And so then they were in the land. And then, so everything was ready for the Messiah. And you remember who was sent to prepare the way for Jesus? To announce uh, that Jesus, John, John who? The, uh, the, the Baptist. Baptist. John the Baptist. And what did he say about Jesus? Jesus is the what? The Lamb, Lamb, of, God. The Lamb of God. And what is the Lamb of God going to do? Uh, okay. But what's he going to do with the sins? Remember, it was different Take because remember the, in the Old Testament, this, the, the animal sacrifices were a covering. And they didn't, they just covered sin and they would have more sin and they would cover it more and they would cover it more and they would keep doing the sacrifices. So Caleb, how was Jesus different from the animal sacrifices? Okay. He did what to sin? Did he, he did cover it, it or did he do something better? Took it away. He took it away. So that's why we have the white heart. So once Jesus died for our sins, he took away our sins. And the animal sacrifices couldn't take them away. That's what they had and to keep no doing. And there's no reason them. for him dying since there was none. And so Jesus Christ, when he dies, he takes away our Daddy, sin. Daddy, you went out of what are able. you? What are you trying to say, Caleb? So, well, so um, when he paid for it and took it away, then after, he would have finished his job. He did. He finished it. Once he died, it was paid and finished once for all. Yeah, there's no more animals to kill it on. You start killing people. Well, Hold they, on. yeah, they had a lot of animals that they would sacrifice. And that just showed people that sin is very serious and sin had a penalty. If you can imagine taking an animal out and killing it, that's very sad. But that, so that was a very, very clear picture that God gave them of how bad sin is. And how he's a holy God that requires sin to be taken care of. So it's kind of very, you know, showed them very seriously what it took to forgive sin. And remember, it was all pointing. So Jesus would have talked to these two guys traveling and pointed them all to Jesus. And talked about how Jesus was the, was the Lamb of God who took away sin. But wait, isn't um, the stranger to the road to Emmaus uh, that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's what this okay. is based on. Yeah, yep. So you can see all through the Old Testament, these things are just showing what Jesus Christ was going to do was going to do for us. Okay. All right. So then, uh, by this time, they were nearing. By the time Jesus kind of reviewed the Old Testament and showed them how the Old Testament talked about Him. Uh, they were nearing the town of Emmaus, which was the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going to keep going, but they begged him and said, stay with us tonight. It's late. So he did go home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread that they were going to eat and he blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. So it was just like he was there to give them a, a lesson, and then he, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked on the road and explained the scriptures to us? So now they understood the Old Testament things were pointing to the sacrifice that Jesus was going to make and how Jesus was going to be the one way of salvation, just like the ark. And he was going to be the Lamb of God that that was the sacrifice for sin. And he was going to be our substitute to pay for our sins. Yes, Travis. You know, this reminds me, Owen with his good lightness, the red. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Then they jumped up 
and they hurried back to Jerusalem. So they had just walked from Jerusalem and now they're going to go back to tell the disciples. And they were going to tell the disciples, the Lord is alive. He is the savior promised in the scriptures. He is the lamb pictured in the sacrifices. He is the Lord. And at last, the message of the Old Testament made perfect sense to him that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is God's one way of salvation. Why do they call him Messiah? Messiah. That's the anointed one, the, the one they were expecting to, to come to help them. And that means like the son of the most high. The son of the most high God and the anointed one. It really means the anointed one What's of God. Anointed, mean? um, anointed means one who is like set apart and very special. Okay. And he was the one they were looking for oh, to wow, save Oh, wow, no one. Yeah. Yep. We better start wrapping up. So if, if the Old Testament points all these things to us, and Jesus is our substitute. What's left for us to do with Jesus? Okay. What's left for us to do? Do we even have to ask for forgiveness or did Jesus already take care well, we of forgiveness? Believe it. Believe we it. just believe. We just believe. We just have to believe okay. that he did it. Okay. All right. So we, we just simply put our faith in what Jesus Christ has already done on the cross. Because our, has our sin been paid for? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if it's already paid for and done, what's left for us to do? Believe. To believe. That, That's right. That's happened. To believe that Jesus Christ, and what's the gospel? He died for our sins and rose up. All right. So I'd like to open it up to any uh, prayer requests that you have. If you want to send those in. And do you guys have any prayer requests? Um, uh, for me to get my school done. For me to get my school done. For um, June, Jack, Cora, Gabriella, and our grandparents. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And let me just give y'all a quick, mm -hmm. a quick test. Remember the spotlight test that we yeah, had? The spotlight goes on the cross or does and that focuses on what Jesus did or does it go on you okay so give your heart to Jesus does that focus on you or is that focus that Jesus died because I'm doing it that's right that's you giving your heart to Jesus and what saves you can I try okay the cross saves you why does the cross save you Caleb because because what did Jesus do died on me Okay. Is the penalty for your sin giving your heart to Jesus? Or is the penalty for sin having Jesus die and pay it for you? That's right. Very good. Um, okay. So, it? Chloe, this one I'm going to ask you. Uh, so, Chloe, I'm going to hand you the spotlight. So, Chloe, will you surrender your life to Jesus? Where does that put the focus? On Jesus paying it or something you have to do? I have to. I have to. Okay. Right. So, shine it on yourself. All right, very good. Okay, now let's see another one. Okay, Chloe, this one will be for you too. Chloe, will you confess your sins to get to heaven? So you put that back on yourself. That's right. Because what did Jesus do for your sins? He paid for them. He paid for them. What you need to have your sins taken care of has been? Done. Done. So do you have to confess your sins to get rid of them to get yes. to heaven? Do you have to confess your sins well, to get to no, heaven? To... Right. Because some people will tell you you have to confess your sins. And then what if you forget one? Then you think, oh, I forgot one. Then I must be in trouble. Okay. All right. And then, and let's see. Okay. Here's one for you, Travis. Yay. Okay. Travis, will you promise to serve Jesus from now on. Will that get you to heaven? Or is that something that focuses on Jesus taking care of your sin? Or is that something that focuses on you and you trying to do something? Let me say it again. Do you have to, you have to serve him from now on? Will you promise to serve him from now on? Who's that putting the focus on? 
Is it putting the focus on what Jesus did for you or is it putting the focus on what you're going to do for Jesus? Very good. So you don't get, go to heaven by promising to serve Jesus. You go to heaven by believing he paid for your sins. Is there another question for me? Okay. Travis, will you pray as hard as you can until you feel like you're going to go to heaven? Where does that put the focus? Very good. So do you have to pray to get to heaven? No. No, what do you have to do? Believe. Believe in? Jesus Christ. Put this yes. focus on him. Okay. That he died for my sins. All right, Chloe, I'm going to test you on this one. And I want you to think about this. Where's the spotlight? Chloe, right now, you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Is that focusing on what's been done or is that focusing on you doing something? Very good. Okay. So you don't get saved by asking Jesus to come into your heart. You get saved by believing Jesus died for your sins. Do you all six of those questions? No. <laughs> and then after we put our faith in him, then he does come and live in our life, live in our heart. Uh, the Bible says that Christ is in you, the hope of glory in, in uh, Colossians 1.27. So Christ in you. So he does come and live, live inside of us when we believe. But we don't ask him into our heart to get to heaven because he's already done what everything that's needed to pay for our sins. Okay, so let's look at our prayer request as we, as we wrap up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, prayer, prayer requests. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. So let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I just want to uh, make everyone aware as we as we finish up here, this will be our last one. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. Really enjoyed uh, doing this with everybody. And there are some books up at the church. So if you'd like to do a, some something like this with your kids this summer. There's a couple books that I have there at the church. They're, they're with Sharon uh, Ogren, and you can just call the office or go to the office, and Sharon will give you these free books. Uh, one is The uh, Most Amazing Story, and that's going to be good for kids of this age. And then there's another book called The Stranger on the Road to Emmaus, which is going to be very good for ages like this, uh, 11, 12, and up. And that's called The Stranger on the Road to Emmaus. So if you want to do a summer study with your kids, I'd highly recommend those two books, The Most Amazing Story and The Stranger on the Road to Emmaus. And they're both free and they're both at the church office. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, everybody. All right, dear, dear Father, we uh, just uh, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you always make a way of salvation. Thank you that you want to be with us for eternity. Thank you that you sent Jesus Christ as our substitute and that us going to heaven is believing in what he's already done for us through his death and resurrection. Thank you that it's finished. Thank you that it's paid and that we can know that once and for all. Father, we pray for our country. Uh, we just uh, hate to see um, violence um, directed towards uh, people. And uh, we just pray for protection for, uh, for the protest. And Father, we pray that you'd um, stop the violence that's going on um, against people, against the business owners, against the police. Um, and Father, certainly um, uh, we know that this started off by one wrong. And we thank you that uh, the uh, process of justice is started against that uh, one officer uh, because what he did was wrong. And Father, we just pray that this spiral of violence would stop. Um, and uh, Father, again, we just pray for protection and, and unity for our country. And Father, for uh, summer for the different families, we just pray for the coronavirus to stay at bay. Pray that you protect our families and uh, pray that you'd be with the studies that are starting this summer. Uh, that would just, they would encourage people after going through this uh, social distancing for so long and that we're still kind of in it. Uh, Father, we pray for Angela and Tracy as uh, for their families, just comfort them with the loss of their family members. Um, 
and we pray for Steve. Uh, we thank you for a good knee surgery. We just pray for a full recovery. Um, and Father, we pray for uh, Sharon as she is she's adjusting to a move here to New Braunfels. And Father, we pray for a meeting um, that's been going on, uh, that we just pray that you'd work through the details there and that would resolve itself. Um, and uh, that you'd give a quick and, and speedy outcome there. And Father, we just thank you again for our time here, getting to do the family devos. We thank you for Jesus Christ, and we just desire to see him glorified through this all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, you I didn't, but we'll do that tonight. Bye. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good summer. Bye. Okay, take care.